What's up my friends, welcome back to another video and today we are taking a look at the newest addition to Spitfire Audio's Abbey Road 1 series called Thematic Horns. So this one is again the, the newest and latest addition to Abbey Road 1 which is essentially they call it film scoring selection. So it's like a, a set of pre-recorded ensembles that they deliver every so often to kind of complete the Abbey Road orchestra if you will. Um, so this one is specifically dedicated to an eight-piece horn section meant to play more melodic lines and soaring themes, as well as some shorter articulations as well to kind of round out this library. So for $49, you essentially get an 11 gigabyte sample library. And yes, it features two types of legato and then some shorts as well and some other uh uh, other articulations as well. So you can read all about it here on the sales page on the Spitfire Audio website. And big thanks to Spitfire Audio for sending me a copy for review as well. So without further ado, let's kind of jump in. In case you're wondering about my uh, favorite sample libraries, the ones I kind of use on a regular basis, I do have a completely free guide that I'd like to share with you uh, to give you more insights into my process. And it's my sample library buyer's guide. It's the first link in the description box below. In case you're interested in reading up my thoughts on my favorite libraries, all the orchestral libraries, even like piano libraries, jazz libraries, percussion libraries, everything. Um, I've condensed it all down into one PDF guide that's super digestible and easy to read. And you can keep that on hand anytime you want to refer to uh, my personal thoughts on the library. So um, if you want to check that out, again, click the first link in the box below. It'll take you straight there where you can download it as my gift to you. So without further ado, let's kind of jump in. This is the interface for the library. You can see there are eight articulations. And in terms of the mic microphone positions, we have two mics, uh, sorry, two mixed microphone positions. Um, I'm just gonna stick with the mix one here for the purposes of this video, but you also have the vintage mics, which tend to sound a little bit warmer. Then you have the pop close, uh, pop R, which could be pop rear maybe, but then you have the traditional close trees, ambient outriggers and spill mics. So true to Spitfire Audio Faction, they usually give us quite a few um, our, uh, microphone positions to choose from, but the mixed ones are typically the ones that I will tend to go with myself. So without further ado, let's kind of jump in. I'll play through all the articulations and then we can chat about our uh, impressions at the very end and whether it might be a good fit for you. So here we go. Let's start with the performance legato and then we'll move to the right and down. Here we go.
All right. So most of these articulations are split in a very even way. Like you have the longer articulations here on the top and they are mainly controlled by the mod wheel and expression. You know, you can control that however you like. Um, in terms of the actual dynamic range, right? So I've, I've seen some people say that they're kind of unhappy that the library doesn't top out at an extreme fortissimo type of range. And while that's certainly valid, I don't know if that's what this library is truly um, designed for. I think it does come with five dynamic layers, but the top layer does sound at about an MF to a forte, which um, yes, it, it's not the like searing high dynamics, but if you really want that, then it might be better to go with something like the Cine Samples uh, 12 horn patch or something, right? For a library like this, which transitions very nicely between the lower dynamics, which do go down to about a you know piano PP and top out at about the forte at the max for some of the notes, um, it will cover the majority of the melodic lines I think you will need this library for. Again, if you're looking for that, that super brassy sound, then there are other options for that. But for $50, you are getting quite um, a, a nice set of dynamics here that do feel quite smooth. Um, do, please do forgive the shaking of the mod wheel when I do ride it up and down. Uh, th for some reason, it does, just doesn't register very well uh, from my MIDI controller, so it keeps on shaking even though I'm not actually trying to shake the the, the wheel with my hand. But uh, yeah, so so yeah, you have the longer articulations here, which are controlled by the mod wheel, which you might expect. The shorter articulations are controlled by velocity, which is again very standard, and you can have quite a bit of control there to craft your own phrases, but you know, as proven by the two types of legato here, this library is primarily meant for those melodies that have those connected lines. And I really especially like how on those larger intervals and when the notes are going higher in the registers, um, you can really hear that transition between those notes. So for example, if I go from a C to a B, you definitely hear that slide there, right? Let's try another one. So both up and down, you definitely get that transition. So it does it does have that quite realistic feel. And that transition is not too loud to where it becomes obnoxious, obnoxious and um, just detracts from the experience, I think. Um, yeah, and then I think the main difference between the performance legato and lyrical legato is just that the performance legato has these shorter attacks that are laid at the beginning of each of the notes that you play when like in a relatively short manner. So you can play some pretty... Uh, convincing staccato notes, you know, to start off a melody. But if you want to transition immediately to the legato, then the performance patch can do that as well. The lyrical legato seems to remove that sharp attack at the beginning of the notes, uh, rather giving you that more smooth and connected feel for those notes. So yeah, that's kind of a quick overview of the Matic Horns. Again, big thanks to Spitfire Audio for shooting over a copy. Um, hopefully this gave you a bit of an insight in addition to Paul's walkthrough of how this library feels and sounds. And let me know in a comment below whether this is something you think you might be interested in. Maybe you don't have a, a dedicated horn library already for your soaring melodies. Um, if you're interested in French horns, would this be something you are curious about downloading for $49? It's not a huge investment and you definitely get some value for money, especially if you are not super equipped with the brass section yet and you wanna get up and running with the French horns. This might be a good way to go, all right? So yeah, let me know what your thoughts in a comment below. And again, if you're interested in my personal thoughts uh, and my personal choices of sample libraries that I use on a near daily basis for all my work, then again, I want to give you my sample library buyer's guide. It's 100% free and it categorizes all of my favorites from orchestral sections like strings, winds, brass, and percussion, but there's also other sections in there as well to really round out my entire preference. Um, and I continuously update it as well. I continually update it on a regular basis when there are new libraries, I think, uh, will become my favorites. I'll put them in there and I'll send it out. Um, so I definitely want to give that to you totally free as a gift for checking out this video today. So thank you so much again. I, I appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, my friend.